Hi, I'm Mags. Welcome to the first of the Pump House Theatre Creative Talks virtual specials. And my first guest today is an actor, director, and most of the time an all-round good guy, Terry Hooper. <laughs> Terry trained at the Rose Bruford School of Speech and Drama. He's worked as a professional actor in the UK and in Europe and in New Zealand. He's worked in theatre and education, film, television as an actor and director. He's been the founder of the Minus One Theatre Company, Crossfed Productions and the Acting Collective. And Terry currently directs and performs and is the theatre manager for the Wawa Tri Charitable Trust, where he plays the would-be supervillain, Dr. Gloom. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. Thank you, Ola. So would you like to tell us when you got started in the performing arts? Well, I started like most people at school, um, doing little uh, shows, um, um, doing you know the end of year shows with school mm -hmm. and things like that. But I was also a um, I my parents were ministers for the Salvation Army, ah. and so they did a lot of stuff for them. Mm -hmm. um, I was a singer in the band and um, player in the band and all that business. And I started a drama group with them. Um, but I always thought it was going to be a, just a, a part-time thing and I never thought it could be a career. Mm. Um, so late in my 16, when I was around 16, I decided I, uh, I wasn't going to do the path that my parents wanted me to do, which was uh, be in banking and accounting. Uh -huh. I started an accounting course, but uh, soon got bored of that and realized that I could uh, go and do a performing arts course. Um, I left home at 16 um, due to my conflicts over um, what my parents wanted me to do, be and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I went to Sheffield in the north of England. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in Sheffield and started a performing arts course there because I didn't quite know what I wanted to do in the performing arts. I just wanted to to learn um, and so I did dance um, and I did um, a musical theater and then trained for two years with them at a college in Sheffield and then applied for drama school and got into a couple of drama schools um, and finally chose to go to Rose Bruford which was a an all-round course and it actually offered a degree at the same time. So I could do my speech and drama in the daytime and I did my degree in the evenings. Um, so it was pretty full on course at those yeah. times. Yeah. So you, uh, you've got a bit of a musical bent as well, you're a musician. Um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, I was a good singer in my youth, um, not so much as I got older. Um, the voice dropped and I, I started to uh, go down the scale mm -hmm. <laughs> towards the bass end of singing. But yeah, I really enjoyed I, I, it. opened up, the performing arts course opened me up to a lot of other art forms, um, not just the acting. Um, and so I, I uh, started my education in that way. Uh, oh. and, and I heard you mention dance as well. Yeah, uh, a few people don't know that about me, is that I, I trained in contemporary dance. Um, mm -hmm. was really excited by it. I, I, I never believed, you know, I always thought dancing was for girls and all that, was taught that. Um, and when I went on my performing arts course, I, I was introduced to a, a group called Phoenix Dance, who, who were a group of males who came out of Leeds. Right. Um, and, Not a place uh, you associate with dance. <laughs> no, um, but they were an all-male troupe. And then I suddenly realised that, you know, uh, I could do this and I really enjoyed it. I did no level in, um, in dance. Uh, so yeah, yeah, really loved the contemporary dance. He used the loved the art form of using the body mm -hmm. to uh, express, um, and that's stayed with me for the rest of my life. Um, I, I very much work from the body um, and uh, and build a character from um, the physical, uh, yeah. and uh, that 
tied in as well with the Rose Bruford way of, of, of teaching. And they had a very classical training, but also at the same time, um, a lot of movement and embodying the character and how you could use the body to create a character. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's where I, I started. <laughs> oh, see, I'm delving deep. I'm getting secrets out already. <laughs> so so you've, you've done all these different kinds of art forms, performed in lots of different shows, been involved in lots of different shows. Do, do any particular shows stand out for you? What's your favourite ones that you've been involved in or, or you've seen? Oh, um, I would say... As a performer, um, one of my favourite shows was The Zoo Story um, by Edward Albee, mm -hmm. um, just because it's such an amazing delve into the psyche and, uh, and human uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love the theatre of the absurd. Um, later in my life, I went... Um, quite deeply and I did my thesis on Latin American theatre right. um, where it's not so scripted it's more into physicality and physical and use of the body mm -hmm. um, um, yeah so as a performer that one um, as a director I, I toyed between two perform productions um, one was Gary Henderson's um, Peninsula um, which I did the Auckland premiere for. Mm -hmm. um, that was an amazing experience. Again, um, he he tears back all of... Um, if people don't know it, um, you, you were asked to just use um, five chairs and the actors and use the actors' bodies uh, um, to create these characters. They double as children and as adults. Um and I, I worked quite heavily with the team um, on mime, um, physicality, mm -hmm. uh, and paired it right back to, I only let them have four blocks, uh, a very stylized um, set, which was a topical, uh, a topical graphic map of the peninsula. Right, yeah. Uh, Akira, um, um, designed by John Parker and his team. Uh, and um, yeah, it was a beautiful experience um, working with these actors to create these characters and, and use mime very heavily. I, I, I made them work for hours on where things were on the table, how things worked. Um, and it brought it back to me the fact that you don't need too much you can pair it right back as long as you're coming from truth um you can produce anything on stage which I, which is the main thing i love about theater um especially directing wise um even to the point where there is a moment where one of the children tells the teacher that the, the toilet is blocked and uh and i i worked with them very hard on see the toilet see the block see the thing and as the teacher rolls up his sleeve, ready to put his hand down into the toilet, the whole audience just went, ah! and I thought, yes, we did it. We've got it. Yeah, we've got the audience in there. Even though the, yeah, there's no toilet. There was no block toilet on stage. There was nothing there. There was, you know, but just the, the actor's work, which was Matthew Dish, um, great actor. Um, he, he just sort of believed in it. He yeah. believed he could see it, so the whole audience saw it. Um, um, yeah, so that and um, one that was at the, at the Pump House, um, uh, Not About Heroes, right? which yeah. I think is an amazing piece. Very, very um, poignant. Um, challenges a lot about war, mm. about relationships um, uh, and, uh, and between these two males. Um, and, and beautifully written, uh, and I would urge anybody to read it. It's, it's a, 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 an amazing piece, and that that was performed at the Pump House, um, which was. I think that was the first time we met. Was, was yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yes, yeah, yeah. So between those two, for directing wise, yeah, that was one of my folks. So talking about the Pump House. 
Yeah, I know you've been there a few times now. Do you have yeah. any special memories of the pump house? Well, um, surprisingly enough, I, I've got so many great memories um, working on the Gary Henderson's writing course, bringing those to um, you know to the stage. Uh, gr- they're brilliant. I love doing that. Um, Pride and Prejudice, Persuasion, not about heroes, um, but. My actual favourite memory of the Pomp House is taking my daughter for the first time, Evie, when she was little. Um, and it was her first um, adventure to a, a show, a, a, a real theatre piece. Um, we, I, I, on my own and her, we went to the Whale Rider, okay. um, as you produced. And I just loved the experience of her being captivated by the magic of theatre um and and you know so my actual uh, most favorite memory of the pomp house is being in the audience <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's a, a beautiful a beautiful show beautifully produced and yeah mm. yeah that was okay. so you know you've told us a little bit about you and your and i've discovered a couple of secrets about you about your contemporary dance etc uh, do you have any other hidden talents or the things that people might not know about Terry Hooper that you were um, Yeah, well, there's there's one thing that m- not many people know. I, I, I sometimes let it out and, and people see it sometimes on my Facebook page, but I had a break from theatre uh, for a while and, 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 and acting. Um, around my 20s, uh, I lost my way a little. Um, I was searching to, I'd, I'd forgotten that, about the art and started to search to be a star and wanted to be a big acting star and it wasn't happening. And I got very disillusioned with acting. Um, and I became, I went and became a florist <laughs> for about 10 years. Um, I, I ran a shop in North London. Um, I had quite a few famous um, people uh, who, on my client list. Oh, can, you um, uh, hmm? can you name names? Oh well, yeah. well, uh, one of the people in the area was Sting um, and Trudy, um, and we had George Michael. Um, who else were some of our famous clients? Yeah, many of the no- sort of North London yeah actors. Whereabouts um, in North London? Well, we, I started in Highgate Village, which is where I met most of my A-lift celebs, um, yeah. Piers Brosnan and things, which was quite strange, and uh-huh. Annie yeah. Lewis. Um, but I, my shop itself was in Crouch End. Right. So a lot of the EastEnders stars and yeah. the Bills stars and people like that um, well, yeah, came into my shop. One of my favourites was Tom. He uh, plays um, Lucifer now. He's oh, gone. yes, Tom Ellis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you've just made a, a million hearts swoon there. They're saying you, you know Tom He was Ellis. a great, great, a lovely, lovely guy. And I always made sure that his Valentine's bouquet was ready when he... <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Fantastic. It was, it's a beautiful outlet for me because mm. it, it, you know, it still kept me in touch with art and... and, and and, and design and things uh, and, and yeah kept me sane for a long time very hard work but I loved it dearly and I still do it I still now and again family and friends or yeah. ask them to do weddings and things Ooh. So, yeah now and again now and again <laughs> yeah oh, it's great when you've got an outlet like that that's completely different to what you do it's mm. it's a soul soother yeah, I think I think it's important, and uh, especially for for young actors to have something that is, you know, that they can fall back on. Because we know, you know, as actors, you're never going to work full time. Um, well, I say that, but I'm working full time at the moment. Um, but you know, the the acting business is hard, and it's good to have some creative outlet that you can you can fall back on at times and. Come Valentine's Day, there's always people wanting a florist. <laughs> so, yeah. so book your orders now for next year. <laughs> I'll take 10%. So, <laughs> so you see, so you're, you're working full time. How are you coping with the, the lockdown? How are you 
you doing anything creative while things are sort of still? Well, as I say, um, yeah, I'm I'm full time at Woe Studios, and I, I, I run the theatre there, um, and so we're still trying to be creative. Um, and as I say, we're I'm Doctor Gloom, so as soon as they announced that we were going to level three and soon be going to level four, I ran ran down to the studio and got all the costume and the noses and the prosthetic stuff. Um, and very luckily, my partner Amy is trained in prosthetics, so she um, she can do the nose. So every so often, we get all all the stuff out, and we do the little video um, blogs that we're we're showing on our Facebook page for both studios mm-hmm. and Instagram, um, which it, which is fun and it keeps me going, you know, and much to my, the delight of my two-year-old Fleur. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dr. Gloom, Dr. Gloom, <laughs> Dr. Big Nose, Daddy Big Nose. He's Daddy called. Big Nose. Um, Daddy Big Nose, yeah. <laughs> Daddy Big Nose comes to the house. And, yeah, so I have fun with that. Um, and I do, you know, um, I write for myself. I, I, I never write for anyone else. I, I just write for myself. And um, so I write poetry for myself and just get words down on page. Mm. Uh, and, and and what I'm, I'm really enjoying is how um, creative people are being in their bubbles. You know, um, yeah. I'm watching other performers and, and, and pieces that people are doing, which it, it is great. You know, it is good to keep your mind occupied uh, and, and, and keep that creative juices flowing, you know, because uh, as performers, you know, we really do need an audience. We really do need that outlet. Um, and so it, it, it's great to watch. Um, and some things are, are very, very funny, funny that people are putting up or are very poignant. Yeah. So yeah. it's very enjoyable. <clears throat> So do you have any advice for, for other creatives to cope with No. Yeah, I, I think one of the major things to come out of this um, is it, it, it's okay to, to not do things, you know. Um, we can often look at what everybody else is doing and try and compare ourselves and, and compare what's happening. Um, and thinking, oh, you yeah, know, they're, they're doing such creative things. Well... A lot of those people have videographers in their household or can have or have the equipment, you know, or, you know, have been creative with their time. But I think it's also good to say, you know, it's okay not to do something. So, you know, be kind to yourself, look Mm -hmm. after yourself, you know, don't try and judge yourself by other people, you know. Um, we can often see things on Facebook and think, oh, everybody else is doing things. But we we don't see what those creatives are going through in their quiet times, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, we can often judge ourselves too harshly sometimes. Um, yeah. uh, and I think that's one of the biggest messages I, you know, I'd want to put out there is be kind to others but also be kind to yourself and be kind and 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 forgive yourself if you do want to just slop on the sofa for a day or Mm. sit and play video games for an afternoon you know it's okay it's it's you know forgive yourselves you know and let yourselves be and don't pressure yourself into feeling as though you need to do something you know just let it happen when it happens um and 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 care 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 for yourself yeah they're lovely words to to finish with thank you very much for being my first guest and i hope it's too much of an ordeal for you (laughs) no it was an absolute pleasure talking to you max and and a pleasure talking to everyone so uh, stay safe look forward to seeing you at home house soon oh very soon hopefully Fingers crossed. Yeah. Thank you. Kia kaha. Kia kaha. Bye now.